This video covers the second part of section 1.2, compare and contrast different types of attacks for the CompTIA Security Plus exam. In this video, I'll be talking about application and service attacks. On your screen, you see the many types of attacks that can occur and breach our information and data and systems. In this video, I'll be talking about application and service attacks, such as buffer overflow, cross-site scripting, cross-site request for forgery, privilege escalation, injections, etc. Also be talking about some cryptographic attacks, such as birthday, rainbow tables, brute force, and pass the hash. Application vulnerabilities are a known threat vector. And on your screen, you see some of the common types of attacks. I'll be talking about each of these over the next few minutes. OWASP is considered the authoritative source to understand about the top 10 application security risks. See OWASP.org for more information. You see the list on your screen. It's very similar to the list that's also mentioned by Security Plus. The first type of application attack I'll discuss are buffer overflows. This is a type of injection attack where more data is input through a field then the buffer can hold. It's like trying to fill a bucket too full. Any of the water that spills out is then executed. Any of the code that goes beyond the buffer could then be executed by the operating system. It's an anomaly where a program while writing data to a registry or buffer overruns the buffer's boundaries and overwrites adjacent memory locations, causing the breach. The second form of application attack is injection. It occurs when untrusted data is sent to an interpreter as a part of a command or a query. The most common fall into the following categories, using escape characters not filtered correctly, type handling not properly done, conditional errors, and timing delays. The way to defend this attack is to filter your input. See the later video where I talk about how to protect web applications. Common examples of injection attacks include SQL injection, operating system injection, LDAP against the directory, and XML injection. Cross-site scripting occurs whenever an application includes untrusted data in a new web page without proper validation or escaping or updates an existing web page with user-supplied data using a browser API that can create HTML or JavaScript. You see an example on your screen. Cross-site request forgery, CSRF, is an attack that forces an end user to execute unwanted actions on a web application, also known as a session writing or one-click attack. Privilege escalation is a form of pivoting attack the attacker will breach the system having bare authentication rights, bare privileges, and then they try to gain further privileges such as administrator or root, or the privilege that is running a particular application. It's the act of exploiting a bug, design flaw, or configuration oversight in the operating system, application, or software to gain elevated access to resources that are normally protected from that application or user. How do we protect against these application attacks? On your screen, you see some good ideas. First of all, follow some good coding practices. You can go to OWASP and see their directions. Work with your application development team to make sure they learn good coding practices as well. Filter and validate any input. Any input that could come from an untrusted source, say anyone on the internet should be filtered and validated. Basically, don't trust input. Use a web application firewall, a WAF, which is a specific device that scrubs for any unwanted data based on heuristics, anomalies, or signatures. You also want to build security into the software development lifecycle. Lastly, have an incident response plan in place for when that inevitable bad thing happens. A zero-day exploit is a type of an attack against a previously unknown security vulnerability. It may take advantage of a security vulnerability on the same day that the vulnerability becomes generally known. It's zero-day because there's zero time 
to get the vulnerability fixed before it's announced. Best known example is Stuxnet. It was the worm that took out nuclear generators. Prevention for zero days include defense in depth, staying up to date on patches, and keeping your antivirus up to date. There are other types of attacks you should be aware of, such as impersonating, masquerading, and relay attacks. Impersonation is the act of pretending to be someone or gain something to gain unauthorized access to a system. The prevention against these attacks are token authentication, such as using Kerberos, multi-factor and two-factor authentication, encryption, and sequenced session identification. Driver manipulation is another form of attack. Drivers are the programs that control devices such as printers, media keyboards, mice, etc. Drivers are normally signed. If you trust a driver from a source that you shouldn't, then it could lead to a breach onto your system. Shimming is creating a library or modifying an existing one to bypass a driver and perform a function other than the one for which the API was created. Refactoring is a type of driver manipulation. It's a set of techniques used to identify the flow and then modify the internal structure of code without changing the code's visible behavior. Be familiar with these forms of driver manipulation and ways to secure against them. There are numerous cryptographic attacks you should know. If you're not familiar with cryptography, reference Domain 6 of the CompTIA Security Plus exam. The first cryptographic attack are birthday attacks. It's kind of like two people having the same birthday, it's a 1 in 13 chance. Well, birthday attack is an attack against a cryptographic hash that looks for hash collisions, exploiting the one-to-one -one nature of hashing functions. Again, if you're not familiar with hashing, refer to Section 6. A known plain text ciphertext attack is when an attacker attempts to derive a cryptographic key by using pairs of known plaintext along with the corresponding ciphertext. So I have ciphertext, I have the plaintext, I might be able to determine what that key is. A frequency analysis attack is looking at blocks of the encrypted message to determine if there are any common patterns. So you're seeing multiple letters, maybe that are not using a salt. So if you're not familiar with salt, and check out section six. Other types of cryptographic attacks include password attacks, such as a dictionary attack, where you're systematically entering every word in, from the dictionary as a password. Way to defeat it is don't use dictionary words as your password. Brute force is systematically attempting all possible combinations of letters, numbers, and symbols. This is usually automated. Rainbow tables is all possible password hashes that are computed in advance. The last cryptographic attack against passwords is pass the hash. It's where an attacker attempts to authenticate to a remote server or service by intercepting password hashes on the network. See your study material for more information on these and other types of cryptographic attacks against passwords. Let's practice on another sample quiz question. During a breach investigation, you notice that the attacker entered the database through a web front-end application by manipulating the database code to exploit a vulnerability. What is the most likely name for this type of attack? The answer is C, SQL injection. This is a form of injection attack against back-end databases. Question two, which of the following types of attack is the result of software vulnerabilities and is caused by supplying more data than is expected in an input field? The answer is A, buffer overflow attack. This is basically the definition for buffer overflows. Question three, which form of attack uses special programs that attempt to all possible character combinations to determine passwords? The answer is A, Brute force attack. This is the definition. This concludes part two of section 1.2, compare and contrast different types of attacks. In this video, I talked about application 
service, and cryptographic attacks. 